Nonprofit organization estimates that more than 300 Christians are killed every month just because of their faith. Iraq and Syria, where ISIS is operating, rank third and fourth now on open doors list of countries that persecute Christians. Many are calling it cultural and human genocide. Here's Sister Diana Momeka of the Dominican Sisters of St. Catherine of Siena this week. She escaped from ISIS in Mosul, Iraq. We need the world to hear our stories that we have been driven out of our homes. We have done nothing. Why do we deserve this while we are the minorities that we have not hurt anybody? Do we deserve to be like this living in the slums? Joining me now, Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council. Tony, good to see you today. Good to be with you, Shannon. And you have been talking quite a bit to anyone and everyone who will listen about this persecution that's been ongoing. You've testified before the United Nations. Are they finally involved? Is someone going to do something? Well, it's disturbing when the United Nations seems to be more concerned about religious freedom than our own country, despite the laws that we have here. The International Religious Freedom Act, which was passed in 1998, says it should be a, pi a priority. But according to the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom that was just released, a report by them, the administration is missing it. They continue to fail to uphold this as a priority uh, in our foreign policy. Well, we know that this position that we have, this ambassador at large for international religious freedom, during this administration, um, uh, there hasn't right. been anyone in that position. Um, to his credit, the president has appointed someone Just now. Just recently. Just recently. So there is someone in this position. But what can they practically do to address this well, issue? Well, for, first off, according to the, 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 to the statute, the federal law, that's supposed to be a direct reporting to the president or to the secretary of state. It remains a low-level position, so this information, you know, trickles up at best. Uh, but, but just for instance, this week, the president met with the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. I wonder if there was discussion about the fact that even on the president's own State Department's list of uh, states that repress religious freedom, Saudi Arabia is at the top. Was that discussed? Uh, I doubt it. Uh, we, in fact, the, the uh, actions we see from this president when it comes to Cuba, another country on the list, Iran, another country on the list, these discussions, which are supposed to be, according to the law, at the top of our foreign policy priorities, they never get discussed. Well, and to be clear, although there is quite a focus now on Christians and the genocide that is happening with respect to them, those numbers are unmistakable. The reports are unmistakable. Right. There are other religious right. minorities, the Yazidis. Christians. There are people within the Muslim faith who are also being targeted by uh, ISIS and other extremists who think that they're not um, faithfully following the way they interpret, the way the extremists interpret um, the Quran and other religious writings. So we know that there are all kinds of minorities who are under attack. That's correct. It's the Yazidis, as we saw, and, and, and along with this, Shannon, it's humanitarian crisis that, according to this report that was out this week, is mushrooming. Mm -hmm. And the United States can and must do more on this. But there's an underlying problem here, and that is this has not been a priority for this administration to address. When it comes to the law and the priority of uh, religious freedom, this president has been you know, like an, a, a deacon at an old Baptist church that's out taking a smoke during the message. He's missing it. Religious freedom should be a priority under uh, our law. And you mentioned um, the many refugees. We know millions are pouring into neighboring countries who are now buckling somewhat their own economies and trying to assist right. these people who have nowhere it's, else it's to go. Open Doors, you made reference to Open Doors USA. They've, uh, they've had a report that shows this is unprecedented in modern times, this persecution. The humanitarian crisis is not getting a lot of coverage on this. But I'll have to say, Shannon, we shouldn't be surprised of this uh, growing persecution and our indifference toward it from this administration's perspective because of their hostility toward religious freedom here at home. Now, clearly, you know, beheadings are not the same as being forced to violate your faith, but they spring from the same root of intolerance. Well, we're going to talk about that coming up with uh, Governor Bobby Jindal out of Louisiana, who is now going to face his own uh, controversy with the law that Louisiana is trying to pass there. But we thank you for shedding light on the international issue. It's not going away. If anything, it's getting worse. And we appreciate your work. On Thanks for covering that. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tony.